Welcome everyone to Beacon of Hope Ministries. We are live right now in our Clearwater, Florida, wonderful facility that we love so much. We're glad you are joining us. I'm Pastor Marcia McAllister. We have been in a series forever. Would anybody say amen to that? Yes. And I've got news for y'all today. It's going to end in two or three weeks. I say two or three because I'm not sure what the Holy Spirit has. He just says, get ready. We're about to wrap this up. So I already know the title of the next series. Would you like to hear it? Yes. Sure. sure. We do. It's one word again. Belonging. It's going to get a powerfully in-depth series. You don't want to miss it. Go to our YouTube channel, Dear Facebook People. It's new in the last few months. All you do is open YouTube and go to capital letters, B-O-H-M, stands for Beacon of Hope Ministries, B-O-H-M space global, globals in little letters, and all of this series that is 41 parts so far, this is part 42, are on that, and you can go and refer people to our YouTube channel along with our Wednesday night Bible studies. So... Go there, check it out. Pastor Jim's got some new teachings coming up that will be on YouTube. We'll let you know when those start popping up on Facebook. So we've got a lot of stuff going on around here. And we are glad you are joining us today for part 42. And this is entitled Joyful Activities in Our Heavenly Home. Don't y'all want to know what kind of activities are planned? Sure yeah, so uh, Red Rover, Red Rover, send somebody over. Remember that one? We used to play that one as a kid. Anybody play that one? Anybody skip skip rope or yeah. okay? If you want to do those things, you can in heaven. I'm just telling you right now, you can. You can play hide and go seek if you like. Run from one mansion to another. Somebody's oh, there's somebody Bernadette's hanging out in my you know den or whatever, and you can't find her because you're playing hide and go seek. You say, are you just jesting? No. We're gonna have fun in heaven. <laughs> We are going to have fun in heaven. If you haven't learned that in this series, I don't know what. I have been teaching this all year long. The first one was January 3rd, so we, we're in October, and I'll tell you what. We are going to have fun in heaven. We are going to be joyful. We sang a song this morning, the joy of the Lord is my strength. That comes from Nehemiah 8.10. Guys, when you are feeling the, work, the weakest, the less powerful, the, the like, oh, I ache everywhere. That's Nehemiah 8.10 can kick into your life. That joy of the Lord is my strength. Because it's not just joy right now. This series is all about joy coming up in our next life. Anybody excited about that? Can I get any amen? Oh, oh, good. We got a woo-hoo, too. That's all right. Uh, Abraham had this joy. Abraham had joy. Yeah, go to, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10. And um, I remember using these scriptures early on in the series. And in the next two or three weeks, four, whatever the Lord leads, to wrap this up, I'm going to go back and revisit some of the scriptures that you really need to have down on the inside of you as you get ready for our next life. This is Earth 1, but Earth 2 is coming. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. Hebrews 11.10. He was waiting, who? Abraham. Expectantly and confidently. Here's how we're going to be waiting for heaven from this moment on. Would everybody agree with me? Expectantly and confidently. Amen. Okay? When you're pregnant, as I was many years ago, three times in four years, I waited expectantly right? And confidently that some day that I would be delivered from that massive thing that had grown on the front of me, right? Waiting expectantly and confidently because I knew that something was going to change in my life, right? Guys, I want you to start waiting expectantly and confidently because something's about to change and it's great. And it could happen tomorrow. It could happen tonight. It could happen five years from now, but it is going to happen. When you're pregnant with a child, you know it's going to be within a certain period of time. We don't know exactly, do we? But we know it's getting closer. We know it's getting closer. Looking forward to the city. The what? The what? 
Anybody hear that word? What was that word? What was Abraham looking forward to? A city. <laughs> Which has foundations. An eternal heavenly city is what that meant. In, this is the Amplified Bible. So it has amplified the meaning of that word of with foundations. A city with foundations. And it means this. An eternal heavenly city. What are you looking forward to? An eternal heavenly city. Say it. An eternal heavenly city. Eternal means it's going on forever and ever. Okay? Heavenly. Right? Whose architect and builder is God. Verse 11 of Hebrews 11. By the way, Hebrews 11 is known as the faith chapter. If I were you, I'd start reading it very often. Because it increases your faith. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 11. By faith, even Sarah herself conceived the ability to conceive a child. When she was long past the normal age, remember, she was 75 when she had. Uh, no, she was 90. She was 90 when she, she got the promise. 90. Abraham got the promise at, at age 75. A and Abraham and 65. Sarah, she was 65. And then the baby came when he was 100. 100. And she was 90. 90. Wow. So she received that promise. It says here in verse 11, she was past the normal age. Oh, yeah, duh, really? If you're 90 years old and you have a baby, yeah, you're past the age. And given her the promise, it was reliable and true. Sometimes God doesn't move at the timing that we like. Can anybody say amen to that? We get a promise and we think it's tomorrow. And a lot of times it's 10 years down the road. I am a witness to that in my own life. Verse 12, so from one man, though he was physically as good as dead, yeah, I guess, 75, were born as many descendants as the stars of the heaven in number. Because that was a promise God gave him. And innumerable as the sand on the seashore. Verse 13 of Hebrews 11, all these died in faith, guided and sustained by it. They died, they didn't see the promise yet. Without receiving the tangible fulfillment of God's promises. Only having seen, anticipated them and having welcomed them from a distance. And having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. Guess what you are? You're a stranger and an exile on this earth right now. Okay? Because your real home is not here. Right? It's not here. Verse 14. Now those who say such things make it clear they're looking for a country of their own. Verse 15. If they had been thinking of that country from which they departed as their true home, they would have had a continuing opportunity to return. Okay, verse 16 of Hebrews 11. But the truth is that they were longing for a better country. Everybody say a better country. A better, better country. country. That is a heavenly one. Are y'all looking forward to heaven? Yeah. I mean, uh, we've been singing a lot of heaven songs lately. Today we did home and that one is just wild talking about no more tears and all of that, right? They were looking for that heavenly home. For that reason, God is not ashamed of them or to be called their God, even to be surnamed their God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For he has prepared a city for them. Guess what? God has prepared a city for you. Amen. That is not a cloud. Everybody say a city is not a cloud. Because a lot of people believe that when we die, there is nothing at all that's going to happen. That's it. That's the end of it. Guys, we've been saying that this whole series. That is not the end of it. Right? Okay? So we have something more that's going to happen to us. Now, I think a lot of people remember that when they lose a loved one. I have heard people that are unbelievers say, well, they're in a better place. But I've also heard people say, well, they just passed into nothingness. Really? That is not scriptural, guys. That is not true. Okay? So let's let's look at some more word and, and amplify on this. Let's go to Luke uh, chapter 21. Let's go there for just a moment and go to verse 33. And I'm getting ready. If you take notes, you're going to want to take some notes here of the way heaven's going to be. Because we are we're going to be busy in heaven. And it's going to be joyful. Uh, Luke 21, 33. And by the way, while you're getting that, the best authority about what heaven is going to be like is Jesus. Right? Okay? 
Last week we started with John chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, which says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Do you all remember that? So when Jesus came to this earth, he came as the Word of God. Okay? And he spoke it into existence while he was here, speaking and teaching parables and what all of all of that that he did. So he was the word, he is the word, he still is the word. So when you are reading the word of God, especially if it's something Jesus said, pay attention. Right? That's right. Especially if it's something Jesus said, because he's the word. He exactly. himself is the word. That's okay? Right. And he spoke the word. So Luke 21, 33. Heaven and earth are here forever. No. Did that say that in Luke 21, 33? No. It says heaven and earth will pass away. Well, come on. For those who don't, don't think that, that anything's ever going to change, you're wrong. Heaven and earth, these are the words of Jesus, will pass away, but my words, what? will not pass away. Wow. Okay, verse 34, Luke 21. Be on guard. Okay, here is an admonition to us. Be on guard. So that your hearts are not weighed down and depressed. Have you ever had those days where your hearts are weighed down and depressed, where you feel like nothing's going my way, everything is a mess, every blah, 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 right? Jesus is saying right here, be on guard. Okay, guys, be on guard. Be careful about that. So that your hearts are not weighed down and depressed with the giddiness of debauchery and the nausea. This is the Amplified Bible. I love it. Of self-indulgence and the worldly matters of life. In other words, guys, so that you're not all preoccupied with yourself. Okay, anybody say amen to that? Amen. That's what this is saying. Be on guard that you're not all just consumed with you. Right? God doesn't want us to be that like, well, oh, it's all about me. People aren't doing this for me. People aren't doing that for me. Blah, blah, blah. God does not want us to be that self-focused. Why? He wants us to be focused on what's coming. And what do we need to be doing in order to prepare ourselves to get ready for that? Right? That that day when the Messiah returns. Anybody excited about that? Woo! Will not come on you suddenly like a trap. I'm in Luke 21, verse 34. Lay down those worries and all that preoccupation about yourself. That's why we've been doing this series forevermore. Forevermore. Why? Because we're driving home huge points that now as we begin to circle the wagons and come around and finish this series, there are things that we need to say over and over again so we get it down on the inside of us. And here's one of them if you take notes. Stop being so self-centered. Stop being so self-concerned. Stop keeping your focus directly on yourself all the time because a lot of times you get depressed when you focus on yourself all the time. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. It will come upon you. All right. So verse 35, it will come upon you. What will? The Messiah's return. Mm -hmm. On all those who live. Wait a minute. There's per, the word all is in verse 35 of Luke 21. You see that? It will come upon all those who live on the face of all the earth. Okay, verse 36 of Luke 21. Keep alert at all times. Be attentive and ready. Okay, what's it feel like when, when sleep is trying to overtake you? Right, when you're tired, when you haven't had enough rest and you're just like, can't keep your eyes open. Have you ever been like that? Yeah, driving down. Driving down here, yeah, because that was a long, long trip from Texas, right. And I've made that trip. And it's, it's tough. And guys, there are times in our day or in our lives where we are spiritually, emotionally, and sometimes physically, we can't keep our eyes open, all right? Dangerous if we're driving, okay? Because then we just, you know, can lose our focus. But guys, I believe a lot of us are, are that way, drowsy spiritually and emotionally, okay? Emotionally, we need to be aware of the fact that the junk that's in our past, we've been talking about this for weeks now, present, past, we got, we got, we got to leave that behind and move on to the future of what God has for us. We got to leave it all behind. Mistakes? Yes. Have we made mistakes? If you're human, you've made mistakes. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. If you're human, there are awful things that have happened to you in your life. Can anybody say amen to that? 
Hmm. Baggage. Do we carry it? Hmm. I really prefer when I fly to take my bag in and check it. I used to be one of these that, you know, would just carry carry on, you know, and then throw it up in the overhead bin and all that stuff. I don't do that anymore. I fly where they can just take my bag, my big bag, right? My baggage, okay? But then I always have like a little backpack with me that has the important stuff in. My wallet, stuff like that, things I need. Right? Little book I'm reading, whatever, okay? That's my luggage that I'm carrying on, you know, with me. Because it's got stuff I, I really prize, right? Guys, we got to let go of that baggage that we check in, you know? we got to let go of that stuff that's happened to us. I preached on that a lot in this series. So I'm not going to go on from that, but that point, remember this point, let go of that baggage, check it, okay? Check it in with the Holy Spirit and say, here it is, okay? Carry the important things, the knowledge of the word, that's your luggage, your important stuff, okay? Who, what you really are, your desires, your goals. That's what we've been trying to emphasize in this series. So let's look at verse 36. Keep alert at all times. Be attentive and ready. Um, I think for years, a lot of people have gone through this like kind of semi-slumber. Yeah, yeah, the, you know, someday I'll die. And yeah, I'll make sure that I'm right with God then. We have been doing this now for 42 weeks and given an invitation every single Sunday morning for 41 weeks. And we will today for number 42 and on the radio show. Why? We want to give people an invitation yeah. to come out of their slumber, come yeah. out of their apathy, come out of their, I'll just wait for a while right. and do it now. Right? Amen. And so Jesus says, wait a minute, who said Oh, okay. Just want to make sure you're all awake. Luke 21, 36. Jesus said, keep alert. If you're having a hard time uh, staying awake today, stand up. That's a great way to stay awake. <laughs> Unless until you fall down. <laughs> keep alert at all times. Be attentive and ready. Pray that you may have the strength. What do you pray? That you'll have the strength and ability to be found worthy and to escape. All these things are going to take place. And to stand in the presence of the Son of Man at His coming. What are you praying? Lord, give me the strength to make it through to that day. Give me the strength. Give me the strength so I can do it. Now, I want to, I want to, if you take notes, I want to give you one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever bullet points of what to expect about some activities in heaven. Everybody ready? Okay, I'm going to start with this one. And then on my paper, I wrote it down as number six, but it's number one because Holy Spirit said use number six for number one. So I'm going to do it. A lot of people are stuck in this life because their dreams have not happened. Mm. Their dreams have not happened. They had dreams of this wonderful this happening and that happening and this happening for one of their children and that and whatever, right? And because their dreams have not been fulfilled, they get stuck in a place of cynicism. Would everybody agree? People can become very cynical. Bitterness. Okay? And they're just they are just absolutely caught in that cycle of I wish this would happen. I, I thought this was gonna happen to me. I wish that would have happened. I, I just, you know, blah, blah, blah. One thing I always wanted to do is go to Europe. Okay, I always wanted to go to Europe. I don't anymore. Why? Because I'm going to heaven, so I figure it'll be okay if I don't ever get to Europe. So in two thousand five, my oldest nephew of my sister Jan, who by the way is not doing well, people, I want y'all please to pray for my sister. It's it's gotten much, much worse in the last two weeks. So I was there a couple days ago. I'll be going back in a minute tomorrow probably. <clears throat> Jan's oldest son, Jason. I've always been close to all my nephews and my nieces. All of them, 10 of them. We've been super close, tight family, mom and dad. Jason was graduating from Cambridge with his master's, with his advanced MBA from Cambridge in England. My sister says, let's go. I said, let's go. So I got tickets. So excited, my daughter Lori and I were going. And then some awful event, which I'm not going to talk about right now, happened with my daughter. And uh, we couldn't go. 
And it was a dream that I had to go to England, be with the family over there. Jason had gotten married. I mean, it was just, it was just all this that I always dreamed we would do, and we didn't get to do it. And for a while I thought, Lord, why couldn't the thing that happened with my daughter happen another time? <laughs> why now? They kept us both from being able to go. But it happened that way. And guys, that example, without giving you the details, is common with all of us. We have dreams. We have things that have happened. And we've said, why did that happen a certain way? Guys, number one, if you're ready to write these down. <laughs> In heaven, our dreams will expand, not shrink. In heaven, you will be able to see dreams come together for you. Maybe some things you wanted to do, or back and never were able to do. You say, you're making heaven sound like it's earth. Guys, earth too is heaven, and it is going to be busy. You're going to be busy. You're not going to be sitting around just floating on a cloud. Remember, we used that illustration this whole series, which a lot of people feel like they're either going to be nothingness when they die or they're going to be floating around playing a harp. You're not going to be doing that. Okay? Wish I would have brought a magazine, that little joke. Yes. No, you're not going to be doing that. You're going to be busy. Everybody say amen to that. Amen. Amen. It's, it's something to look forward to. Your dreams are going to be fulfilled. Some of the dreams perhaps that you had on earth one will be fulfilled. Or maybe you'll have new dreams. Mm -hmm. But number one, your dreams will be fulfilled. Number two, the new earth is going to offer us opportunities we wished we had had here but never had. Isn't that interesting? You're going to have opportunities in, in the earth too, new heaven, that you never ever thought you would have. You're going to be a new and improved you. Now, I've made this point many times. You're going to look like you. Okay, everybody okay with that? And if you're not okay with that, I think that some of the the fat and stuff that we some of us carry will not be present, but I think we will recognize each other. We will have the same DNA. Okay? We will have the same families. That's point three. You're going to have the same families. You say, oh my gosh, if you knew my family. But you know what? The ones of your family that make it to heaven will be the new and improved family members too. The ones that didn't make it to heaven, you won't even be worried about them because there's nothing you can do about it. You're not going to sit up there and pine away. Let's make that point four. You're not going to pine away for those who didn't make it because that would mean you would be in sorrow. And we, in Revelation chapter 21, we're going to get there in a minute, you will not be in sorrow. You will not be crying. You will not be concerned about people who didn't make it to heaven. Now, right now is the time for you to be worried about anybody you know that is not saved. Right, outreach minister? Right now is the moment when we're going to be worried about those people and praying for them. In heaven, you're not going to be praying for people to get saved. The opportunity stops when we go to heaven. When Jesus comes back. When Jesus comes back, we get our resurrection bodies. Remember, we talked about that last week. Okay, well, I don't know what number we're on now. Man, keep me in track. Five, five. Okay. Uh, this is not our only chance of life on earth. You say, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean? Because earth too, even though it's in heaven, is earth. A new and improved, much better. It kind of harkens back to the way the Garden of Eden was. And how perfect that was. And we'll, we may teach on that at some point, Pastor Jim, on the Garden of Eden. And just what God intended in the original plan. What did, what did Adam and Eve do? They didn't even wear clothes. We're going to wear clothes in heaven, by the way. Don't get scared. Uh, but Adam and Eve, they were just carefree. God came down and walked with them, talked to them, right? It was that relationship. Guys, if you don't hear anything else in this series, it's all about our relationship with Almighty God, right? And because of that, we can know that someday we will live on earth too, which is heaven. Another name for heaven, right? New earth. Okay, ready for another one? Um, I've got these totally out of whack, so we'll just I'm gonna skip them as I read them. Okay, remember when we taught a few weeks back? You say, you are really wrapping this up, aren't you? Yeah. 
Remember when we talked a few weeks back about living under the curse? What is the curse? Sin, sickness, and poverty. Okay, now, don't forget this, to make this whatever number you're doing. You don't ever have to earn a living again when you go to earth to heaven. Amen. We're going to call it earth to slash heaven. You're not going to be earning a living. You're just going to be enjoying all the benefits that heaven is. But you're not going to be out there with the toil of your brow. That's now on earth one. Okay? So don't forget that. The curse will be reversed. Correct? When Jesus comes back, the curse is reversed. Praise God. Okay? So you're not, I don't, you're not, wait a minute, let me start over and get my tongue working right. The curse is sin, sickness, and poverty. Okay? Those things are reversed when Jesus comes back and we get our resurrection bodies. We're no longer under the curse of the law. Does everybody understand that point? Okay. So, we will not have to worry about the curse of the law. We will not be living under it. Okay? Uh, the other thing that the curse of the law has done for a lot of us here, and this is another point, is that we've missed a lot of opportunities. <clears throat> Why? You say, wait a minute. What do you mean we've missed a lot of opportunities? If you were stronger physically, would you have done this or that? If what happened to my daughter that directly affected me that April of 2005, which meant I couldn't get on that plane in May 2005, not because of something I did, but because of something she did, mm -hmm. which greatly affected me, okay? That was an opportunity lost for me to go to England, France, and all that. That was an opportunity lost. But you know what? In heaven, we're not going to have any lost opportunities because the curse will be reversed, right? Sin, sickness, poverty. poverty. What happened was my daughter's sin affected our whole family. Okay? And are we good now? My daughter and I, we're perfect. We're wonderful. Right? Let's forgive them. It's over. It's a long time ago. But in heaven, we're not going to have those lost opportunities. So whatever number we're on, we're not going to have lost opportunities. And we're not going to be thinking, oh, I wish I had done this. Here's another one. This just coming off the top of my head. We're not going to live in regret. We are not going to live in regret. Can you see why the title is Joyful Activities? Because everything you do in heaven is going to be revolving around joy. It's going to be revolving around you rejoicing. What are you going to do around the throne? You're going to be rejoicing around the throne. You're not going to stand around the throne and go, I wish that hadn't happened. And boy, I'm going to get even with blah, blah for that. Right? No, we do that here on Earth One. Okay? We, we, we like, rah, rah, rah. that's what we do here. In heaven, there's not going to be anybody going, rah, 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 rah. no. I can't put words on that, so y'all can just describe what that is. What was that? Belly aching? Yeah. Mad? Fussy? Fussy? Fussy. <laughs> None of that's going to happen. In heaven, we're going to realize that the gains are eternal. The losses are past. So what does that mean? Wow. We're Heaven is a place of increasing joy. Okay? And in science, when we do uh, increase and decrease, an arrow up is increase, an arrow down is decrease, right? Scholars, right? If you're going to decrease something on a med or whatever, you know, arrow down, okay, decrease, right? Okay. In, in Earth, we are constantly having things decrease for us. Come on, wake up, everybody. you got to get this, okay? In earth, we have everything decreasing all the time. Your strength decreases as you get older. Would everybody say amen to that, yeah. right? Your joy sometimes decreases because you're mad at this one, you're mad at that one, or this has happened, or that has happened. Or maybe your marital relationship has just gotten so bleh. And so the joy of that has gone decreased, right? The arrow's pointing down. Maybe people in your life have hurt you, and so the people you hang out with have decreased. The arrow's going down. Okay? That's what happens on this earth. 
What's going to happen on the new earth and the new heavens, guys? The arrow is always going up. Right? right? This summer, my, my, my four-year-old, he was three still, Joel, grandson, got really fascinated with elevators. And so we would go to the countryside mall where he liked to watch the ice skaters, you know, and he liked to walk and run and play and everything. And there's a little play area in the countryside mall. But increasingly, he said, let's ride the elevator. Well, a couple times, that's okay. But 15? No. So, I mean, but Joel thought this was the best thing in the world. And so he'd get on the ground floor, and he'd ride up two floors, you know, and he was like, wow. And then he'd push the button and go down. And then he started getting sad because he wanted to go up again. And so after this happened a lot... My kids decided that mall probably wasn't a real good idea because it had an elevator. <laughs> and they get tired of going up and down and up and down. Guys, when we go to heaven, the decrease is done. It's done. It's over. You're not going to sit around and, what, and have any what ifs. Make that another one right now. Somebody's got to make me a list of these because I'm coming out of my heart and my head. Nan's doing it right now. I can tell. In heaven, we will... <laughs> We will not have any regrets. That was one of them. And guys, in heaven, we're not going to be looking back. We're not going to look back at all to all the mistakes and all this and all that. So we said regrets, but you're also not going to be looking back to the what ifs. What if I would have done this? Is anybody excited about this? Yeah. So what are our, let's, let's go to the positive. We're saying what we're not doing. Let's talk about what we're doing. We are going to be living in constant awareness of God's presence which who will light up we don't need we don't even need lamps electricity power sources in heaven Jesus is the is the lamp he's the light okay let me see if I missed any of these um hmm, oh yeah this is probably one of the biggest ones what number are we on 12 oh wow how about that I had five on my on my paper in heaven, nobody will cause us pain anymore. Not only will we not be in physical pain and need surgeries, no more doctors, no more dentists, no more emotional pain, but we will not cause pain or receive pain. That's just huge. You say, Pastor, are you crazy? Where did you get all that stuff? Why are you saying that? Well, let's go to Revelation 21. I'll tell you where I found it. This is only part of where I found it. It's everywhere, all through the Word. See if there's any others. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's another one. Well, you find in Revelation 21. In heaven, we don't take any material things with us, right? No U-Haul full of all your possessions. Your portfolio... It stays behind. Your retirement plan, it stays here. Okay? Yeah? All of that. Okay? We don't take any material things with us to heaven, but here's what we do take. Are you ready for the positive side of what we don't take? The don't take, we don't take any of the bad stuff. Here's what we take. Don't get excited about this, because I, I really want you to get excited about this. Here's, so, so do, please, even though I said don't. I really mean do. All right? Get excited about this. Here's what you take. You take your friendships. Mm. All right. You take your friendships. Remember when I taught on the circle of life? Mm -hmm. In this series, people, we all, everybody started treating each other with more love and respect. Because, hey, we're stuck with each other forever. The people you know, your circle of life, you take your friendships to heaven. Connie, well, we're going to be hearing Connie in heaven doing what? What was that you're going to be doing? Woo! That, yeah. So get used to it because you're going to hear it, right? Okay, yeah. There you go. There's Bernadette's. Yeah. Woo, woo. Okay, all right. So we don't take material things with us, but we do take our friendships. Uh, nobody's going to cause us pain. We're not going to cause anybody else pain. But you know, God created families and he started with Adam and Eve so whether you like your family or not your DNA your DNA will reunite you with your family you will know them in heaven if they're in heaven 
Does that mean you have to hang out with them all the time? No, I don't think you have to hang out with them all the time. Mm -hmm. But you will know your family in heaven. Okay, well, is there anything else I want to add to that before we finish up with Revelation 21? I could go on for another hour right now because I have a whole lot I want to say. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. On earth one, a lot of times, we feel that we don't need others. It, on earth one, a lot of times we go into isolation mode. Well, they've hurt me, so I don't need them. I don't need them. I don't need them. So the negative down here is that on earth one, we can pretty much isolate ourselves when we want to. We can quit speaking to so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so, and, -so and, -so and we're okay with that. In heaven, that doesn't fly. That's not going to fly at all. Because in heaven, God designed us to need each other. You know why? Because he ordained families and friends. If you don't believe me, watch The Chosen. And it will change your life. Because he took ordinary guys, fishermen, a tax collector, etc. And said, I can use you. Why? Because he knew their heart. And he said, follow me. Like Philip in that one scene, Connie, we were watching recently. Philip comes and, and says, is it Philip? Says to Jesus, ah, maybe it wasn't Philip. Uh, yeah, it was Philip. Yeah. The scene with Philip. And Jesus says, I have two words for you. And Philip says, I have two words for you. And they're looking at each other right, right here. And Jesus says, follow me. And Philip says, I will. Powerful. Right, guys. So we get so entangled here on earth one with, oh, does so-and-so like me? Are they talking to me? Are they not talking to me? Or what's wrong with me? Why are they not going, blah, 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 blah. On earth two, it's not going to be like that, guys. We're designed to need each other, but we are all going to be reversed from the curse. Praise God. That's good. So our attitude, you're not going to take medicine, by the way, to regulate your attitude. Or your depression, or anything else, or your sugar. All right, let's finish with this. I think it's going to take me another two weeks, maybe three, to look, to sum all this whole series up. But that's what I'm trying to do: get it to a point here where you can get these concepts down in your heart that you can talk, to, make them your talking points. That's what I want to do in the last three weeks, okay, of this series. You want to land this plane? I want to land this plane, Mike. That's what I want to do. I want to land this plane. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Revelation 21 will help a lot land this plane. Where are we with time? Past. 36, 38. Oh, oh, another hour? Here we go. No. Revelation 21, verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Remember? Earth 2, heaven 2. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and vanished. There's no longer any sea. Verse 2 of Revelation 21. Great way to end this sermon today. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Oh, we're going to talk more about that next week. We have to. Coming down out of heaven from God, arrayed like a bride adorned for her husband. In verse 3 of Revelation 21. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, and he doesn't need a microphone, by the way. See, the tabernacle of God is among men. And he will live among them. Here's what happens in heaven. We live with God. Mm. We don't know about God. Praise we live God. with him. Amen. And we have that right now, the seal of that inside us. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, where does he come? Remember my old example from years ago at Bible study at Beacon of Hope. So many years ago, when you accept Jesus in your heart, you do not see a little plastic Jesus floating around in the earth and coming and landing in your chest. You don't see that because that's not how it works. It's not that. You just know in your heart because you received him that you're different. You've got Jesus on the inside of you, Amen. right? That's right. You Amen. know that. And so from now on, and he walks with me and he talks with me. Remember that old song? And he, I started too high. And he tells me I am his own. Tells me I am his own. Jim can do it. And the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. We think we have.
have joy in our relationship with God right now? It is nothing, kids, to the joy we are going to have in heaven living next door to him. Yeah. Amen. Come on, that'll preach. So look at this verse. I heard, see the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will live among them. Get, don't get excited about that. Um, everybody went along with that. And they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. And verse 4 and 5, then I promise to quit. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Come on, yeah, that needs a, a few of those little, yeah. Amen. Woo! And there will no longer be death. Amen. Amen. As we approach me losing my sister here very soon. I'll be with her forever. She'll beat me to mom and dad. There will no longer be death. There will no longer be sorrow or anguish or crying. Praise God. As I find a Kleenex. Or pain. It's going to be hard to let her go. Because I was two and a half when she was born and I brought her home to the hospital. And, ah. I've known her all my life. I told her recently, don't think she understood, but I said, I've known you longer than anybody. Don't you forget it. I've known you all your life. Guys, there will not be any crying or pain. For the former order of things have passed away. Amen. Amen. And he also who sits on the throne and said, Behold, I'm making all things new. Right, for these words are faithful and true. They are accurate, they're incorruptible, and they are trustworthy. Praise God. Yes. Yes. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Get the mic. No one comes to the Father but by me. You say, why are you crying? Because not only am I about to lose my sister on verse one, but I know, and so this is a cry of, of joy, that she will be out of the pain of her long 12 year illness. She'll be out of the pain of the not knowing who's there, who's not there. And she will immediately, once she lets go of her body, mm -hmm. Be in the presence of the Lord forever. Yes. With my mom and dad, my grandparents, and our whole family that's gone before. And that's joyful. Mm -hmm. You said yes. you're crying. It's a good cry. Right. It's a right. really good cry. Right. I put right. my arms around her Friday. I just held her. I just said, You are so loved by all of us. But especially your loving Heavenly Father mm. who's going to welcome you right. into his presence with joy. Right. She doesn't wake up now hardly at all, so I don't know what she heard, but I trust that she is getting ready mm -hmm. and knows. So dear ones out there, if I quit crying, if you do not know for sure that if you die tonight, i make sure and preserve my mascara here. If you died tonight, you'd be in the presence of God for all eternity. Pray this prayer with us. <clears throat> and by simply praying this prayer, you can be welcomed into the presence of Almighty God and the saints who have gone before. Dear God, I come to you now in the name of Jesus. Dear God, I come to you now in the name of Jesus. Please repeat with Pastor Jim, okay? I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. For my sins and my sicknesses. For my sins and my sickness. I believe that God the Father. I believe that God the raised Father. Raised Jesus from the dead. Raised Jesus from the dead. And because of that fact. And because of that fact. I can be assured. I can be assured by asking you into my heart. By asking you into my heart that I can live with you. That I can live with you for all eternity. For all eternity. That I can live with you, God. 
that I can live with you, God. And all those who've gone before. And all those who've gone before. That loved you. That loved you. And so I welcome you into my heart right now. And so I welcome you into my heart right now. I ask you to forgive me for anything and everything. I ask you to forgive me for anything and everything. I've ever said or done. I've ever said or done. It was not pleasing to you. That was not pleasing to you. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Come and live in me. Come and live in me. Forevermore. Forevermore. This I pray. This I pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And that's the prayer of salvation. If you prayed that prayer, send us an email. Pastor Jim or Betty will respond. Prayers at bohmglobal.com. Dot com. Shell will be one of those as soon as I can get to getting that fixed this week. It's not working right now for Shell, but it's usually Pastor Jim, Been there, done that. Betty, or Shell that will respond to you and they will give you instruction on what to do and grow your faith. And Book of John is where we recommend people start to read. It's a great book. It's full of all of Jesus' I am sayings, who he is. So start with the book of John. Any of you out there, you're saved. If you want a good book to start with, start with the book of John. It really is great. So go to our new YouTube channel. <clears throat> it is all caps, B-O-H-M, that stands for Beacon of Hope Ministries. So you don't have to type all that out. Just B-O-H-M in caps, space, global, lowercase. You'll find this whole Forevermore series. And you will also find uh, the Wednesday night series on healing and some of Pastor Jim's new teachings. He just did one Wednesday night. All of these are up there on YouTube. So uh, we welcome you to check all that out. Subscribe, if you will. There's no obligation, nothing like that. But um, uh, the guy that, our digital guy, marketing guy says, please have them subscribe and all that. God bless every one of you. Please tell friends about the ministry. Share this post. This has been Pastor Marcia and the Beaconites. God bless you. See you next week.